A new day dawned in the Ares Empire's main square. A golden statue of a hero on horseback stood proudly, while people wandered about, and children ran circles around the guards patrolling the streets. One guard, observing the peaceful scene, remarked to his partner, It's awfully quiet here, isn't it? His partner sighed. No one knows when those revolutionaries will start up again, he replied. They're just a bunch of country bumpkins. What kind of revolution could they hope for? The guard chuckled, agreeing. Everything's been quiet lately. Maybe they've finally realized their little rebellion is pointless. His partner nodded. The Imperial Knights likely dealt with them. I hope it stays that way. Meanwhile, in a hidden basement, the revolutionaries gathered to discuss their plan. Leaning over a map, their leaders spoke gravely. Tonight, we'll kill the Emperor and destroy the Empire. It's the only way to restore the kingdom. The others nodded silently in agreement. Turning to one of his comrades, the leader said, Logan Mlan, you have the most important task. You're responsible for protecting the secret manuscript at any cost. Logan nodded solemnly. I understand. As Logan left the basement, a knight hurried after him, catching up. You're quite a patriot, he remarked. Logan looked back, puzzled. Why do you say that? I'm talking about the manuscript, the knight replied. Many have sacrificed to keep it from the Empire. Now it's under your protection, which means their army will target you first. You'll face risks few can bear. Logan replied tersely, You talk as if I volunteered. It's my fluency in the ancient language that put me here, not my patriotism. The knight stopped, embarrassed. I didn't mean any disrespect. Logan glared at him. This isn't about patriotism. It's about revenge. He thought back to a time long ago when he was a different man. Once, he had been consumed by jealousy. After losing a fight to his younger brother, Ronan, a prodigy who'd only trained for three years compared to Logan's ten, he poisoned Ronan in a fit of inferiority. When his father discovered the betrayal, he disowned Logan, casting him out of the family. Exiled and disgraced, Logan became a mercenary. It was only after years of hardship that he realized the depths of his mistakes, but by then, it was too late. One rainy day, as Logan wandered the city, he overheard two girls talking. There's a public execution today, one whispered. The prisoner's name is Mlan. Logan froze, his heart pounding as he heard his brother's name. Without hesitation, he sprinted to the square. When he arrived, however, it was already too late. The guillotine had fallen, and his brother's blood stained the ground. The guards held Ronan's severed head high, proclaiming, This is the fate of fools who dare to rebel against the Empire. The crowd cheered, but Logan collapsed in anguish. That day, he swore to avenge his brother and bring down the Empire. Lost in these memories, Logan was jolted back to the present by the sound of pursuing guards. It's him, the red-haired man with the manuscript, they shouted. Logan dashed through the narrow corridors, his lungs burning. He turned a corner only to find a dead end. One guard closed in, calling to the others. Logan cursed under his breath and gripped his sword tightly. The guard lunged, and their blades clashed. With a fierce shove, Logan disarmed his opponent, driving his sword through the guard's neck. Another guard charged, but Logan countered swiftly striking him down as well. But he was surrounded. One guard sneered, How dare you steal the Empire's treasure? Surrender now and hand over the manuscript. Logan caught his breath, a grim smile spreading across his face. Then I have no choice, he said, drawing a small blue sphere from his pocket. He clenched it in his hand, and it turned a fiery red, releasing a surge of energy around him. As the guards froze in confusion, he whispered, We'll die here together. In a blinding flash, an explosion rocked the room. Logan's life had been filled with regrets and consumed by revenge. But even in his final moments, he couldn't escape the haunting wish to ask for forgiveness. If he were lucky enough to meet his family in the afterlife, he could finally apologize to them all. Suddenly, the protagonist's eyes widened. Just a second ago, he had been in a void, and now he lay on a bed. Letting out a loud sigh, he abruptly sat up, wincing as a sharp pain throbbed at the back of his head. How is this possible? He wondered. I'm supposed to be dead. 
Hearing the loud sigh, a servant entered the room, calling out in concern and asking if he was all right. The protagonist looked at the servant, confused. Rick, he asked, recognizing him. The servant, slightly surprised, confirmed that he was indeed Rick, his main servant, and asked how he was feeling. Thinking of the fact that Rick had died 30 years ago, the protagonist pointed at him and demanded, Why are you alive? Rick shuddered at his words and quickly ran to the door, shouting, It seems the young master has injured his head badly. Someone call a doctor, quickly, grabbing a nearby servant. He told her to hurry. Meanwhile, the protagonist turned his head toward the window, gazing at the knights training on the ground below. He saw the family emblems on their shields and the walls, and he wondered if this could all be a dream. Just then, the door creaked open, and his younger brother entered the room, hesitantly asking if he was all right. Logan froze at the familiar voice, turning his head slowly. Ronan, he said his brother's name a question. Ronan looked away, beads of cold sweat on his brow, his clenched fists betraying his nervousness. The scene was familiar to Logan. He remembered this exact moment. After their first duel, which he had lost, Ronan had come to check on him. But Logan, overcome with anger, had driven him away, reminding him that he was merely the son of a mistress. Despite the insults, Ronan had continued following him everywhere until that day. Afterward, he had stopped coming. Suddenly, these memories overwhelmed Logan, and he clutched his head, gritting his teeth. Ronan called out to him worriedly, and Rick suggested that the young master should rest, but Logan assured them that he was fine. Surprised by his response, Rick watched as Logan smiled gently and asked his brother to come closer. Seeing the expression on his older brother's face, Ronan's nervousness faded, and he approached. Rick scratched his head in confusion, surprised by the drastic change in Logan's character. He left the room, leaving the two brothers alone. Ronan apologized, saying he should have been more careful during their duel. Logan swung his legs over the edge of the bed and replied with a gentle smile, It's all right. You don't need to apologize. You did nothing wrong. I should apologize. His voice trembled on the last word, and he lowered his head, covering his face with his hand. Seeing his brother trembling, Ronan became worried. You really should rest more, he urged. Logan thought about how this kind boy's life had been tragically cut short. Ronan had fought on the front lines at the kingdom's command and died for it. Logan pursed his lips, then placed his hands on his brother's shoulders and, with tears in his eyes, whispered an apology. He pulled Ronan into an embrace, weeping. Ronan, taken aback, asked why his brother was crying but Logan only held him tighter. After a while, Ronan, with swollen eyes, finally made his way to the door, saying with a smile that he would visit again. Logan, equally tearful, waved him off, wishing him a good rest. As he turned back to the window, Logan frowned, realizing that if this wasn't a dream, and he had truly returned to the past, he needed to change everything. Just then, a maid entered calling out to him with concern. Logan turned to her, bewildered. She bowed apologetically, and Rick entered, wearing an awkward smile, explaining that Maria had disturbed his rest because she'd mistaken his room for another. They both apologized profusely, and Logan, remembering his past unkindness, replied calmly that she had done nothing wrong. Bring me some pen and paper, he requested. They exchanged surprised looks, and Rick, imagining the worst, asked, what are you going to do with a pen and paper, my lord? Logan's exasperated response made Rick hastily leave to fetch the supplies. When Rick returned with them, Logan sat at his desk, thanked him, and asked to be left alone. Rick, astonished, asked, Did you just thank me? Are you certain you're all right? Is your head bothering you? Logan was beginning to grow weary of the questions and shouted that he was fine and would like to be left alone. Rick sighed in relief and left finally wishing him a good rest. Alone at last, Logan crossed his arms over his chest and sighed heavily. From outside, he overheard Rick telling Maria, See? He yelled at me, so he's healthy. Get back to work. Logan covered his face in frustration, realizing he'd have to be patient to overcome the reputation he'd created. But there were more pressing matters at hand. He began writing down all he knew about the future the war with the Empire in ten years, 
a disaster that would destroy not only his family, but an entire nation. His goal was to prevent this. First, he would need to stop the vassal war that would break out within the year, an unexpected conflict that would bring dark times for his family. To stop it, he had to speak with someone. A short while later, he stood at his father's office door as a servant knocked, announcing that the young lord wished to see him. Baron Lan, who was by the window, turned surprised. Is this Logan? When Logan had been making his way to the office, the servants had all seemed terrified at his presence, hurriedly moving out of his way. One maid, carrying laundry, stumbled and fell right in front of him, trembling in fear and assuming it was the end. To her shock, Logan extended a hand and asked if she was hurt. She accepted his help with a grateful smile, only for her eyes to widen in terror when he gave her a reassuring smile, which she misinterpreted as a threat. She immediately bowed her head and pleaded for mercy. He was very surprised and asked why she had suddenly screamed while gathering the laundry. Confused, he scratched his head, realizing that his sudden change in behavior was strange to them. It will take time for them to get used to it, he thought. All I can do is wait and show them that I'm different now. He turned his gaze to the mirror on the wall and smiled. Could it have been my smile that scared her? Finally, he reached his father's office door. The servant announced his arrival, saying that the Baron's eldest son had come to visit. The protagonist felt a wave of nervousness, remembering the past. In his previous life, he had resented his father for years after being sent away, thinking him a cold-hearted man who had abandoned hope for his son. He had believed his father was cruel, heartlessly sending him away and never checking on him, even after Logan had been injured in an official duel. How foolish I was to think that way, he reflected, clenching his fist as he entered. Having to send away one's own child would break any parent's heart. Once inside, he greeted his father with a smile, saying, It's me, Logan. His father, Patrick Mlan, turned around, saying his son's name with a look of sorrow. He pursed his lips as if he wanted to apologize. You look better than I expected, he said, then added coldly. So, why are you here? A bit surprised by his father's tone, Logan thought, I expected this, but it's still hard. After all, it had been 20 years since he had seen his father, though for Patrick he saw Logan daily. Logan replied that he was seeking permission to do private training near the family cemetery. Patrick raised an eyebrow with interest and asked, And why is that? Logan answered that to win the impending regional war, they needed to improve all their forces, make the knights and guards stronger, develop new weapons, and much more. However, he admitted that as a family, they had no wealth to support this. Despite being known throughout the empire as poor, there was one way to secure enough funds. With events set to occur in three months, Logan could obtain a sum equivalent to a year's budget, but only if he could sharpen his skills and earn a place of influence. His father, unimpressed, asked if this request had anything to do with losing to his younger brother. Logan assured him that wasn't the case. I realized just how far behind I am. It took me long enough, but I've finally drawn the right conclusions. Patrick shook his head, closed his eyes, and replied, In my view, a lack of perseverance is your greatest weakness, and it seems you still haven't truly come to your senses. Logan sighed, understanding why his father didn't believe him immediately. I get it, he replied, admitting that another part of the problem was his past behavior. Patrick turned toward the window and said, tiredly, All you ever do is talk before telling Logan to leave. Raising his voice, Logan insisted, All this time, instead of accepting my faults, I took my anger out on others. I was childish and foolish. This training will help me change that. Please, give me your permission. Patrick observed him carefully. For once, your words don't sound shallow, he remarked, then asked how long Logan planned to train. About three months, Logan replied. Patrick questioned whether he thought that was enough to surpass his younger brother. Logan explained that his goal wasn't to beat him. He was setting a short time limit to push himself as far as possible. After a brief silence, his father gave a slight smile. Perhaps you have changed a little, he admitted, granting him permission. The protagonist smiled gratefully, thanked his father, and turned to leave. Just as he was about to step out, his father called to him, mentioning that spring was here, 
but the ground was still too cold to sleep on. Try not to freeze, he added. Logan smiled, nodding in understanding, and left. A few days later, he arrived at the secluded training ground, tossing his bag, which contained a sword, to the ground. Only family members are allowed here, he murmured to himself, glad to have the privacy he needed. He couldn't let anyone witness his training methods yet. Taking out a book from his bag, he looked at it fondly. This is the secret of the divine sword. In his past life, he had memorized and burned this manuscript to keep it from falling into the Empire's hands. The original cover bore a golden falcon, and its contents held the ancient secrets of a hero who had defeated a world-ruling dragon. He had encoded it using the cipher of the independent army, making it unreadable to others. I can't believe I have to rewrite it all, he thought. But if the book is true, then even the Empire's aura masters and archmages won't intimidate me. In his previous life, his advanced age and lack of talent had held him back, but now he had a second chance. He clenched his fist, summoning a golden aura around himself. This energy, life force that transforms the body, is called strength, the foundation of the divine sword's power. He needed to focus this energy in his heart and create a core. This was a challenging feat for someone with average abilities, and in his past life, he would have already faltered. But this time, his power seemed to be at its peak, and he felt confident that three days and nights of hard work would be enough. Then, suddenly, he felt a shift within him. His eyes shot open, surprised. Could it be? Has the core already been created? He saw a bright clot of energy in his chest that gradually moved into his heart. He realized that while the core was forming, an extremely dense energy had seeped out, which his body absorbed like dry earth after a long drought. Filled with joy, he clenched his fist, then picked up his sword to test the contents of the secret manuscript. Planting his foot firmly on the ground, he split the earth, and with a light swing, he cleaved a stone in front of him, feeling exhilarated. His body and senses had adapted to the demands of mastering the sword. Though he was unsure why the power core had formed so quickly, he was confident that at this pace, he'd become significantly stronger in three months. Committing himself to training, he honed his swordsmanship day after day. On the morning of the last day, he stopped before a towering tree, determined to attempt the most advanced of the ten techniques in the secret manuscript, the space-time slash. He raised his sword high, assuming the stance, and thought, with a single one-star core, I can perform this technique. His sword and body became shrouded in a golden aura. Filled with resolve, he swung from top to bottom, releasing a shock wave that sliced forward, forming a jagged path. When the wave hit the tree trunk, there was a resounding crash. Dust rose, leaves scattered, and he fell to the ground, catching his breath. Looking up, he laughed in delight. He had split the tree trunk in two. This power exceeds my expectations, he thought, admiring his shaking hands. Though exhausted after one blow, he was pleased to have an ace up his sleeve. Having achieved his training goal, he could now proudly report his results to his father, though first he need to wash thoroughly. When he went to meet his father, however, he was unexpectedly turned away. The knight at the door grinned and apologized, explaining that the Lord wasn't available. Logan asked, Is my father unwell? The knight replied that, according to family law, even close relatives couldn't meet the head of the house without prior notice. Rick, standing nearby, whispered to Logan that this rule was centuries old. Logan remarked that he had met with his father just three months ago without issue. The knight smiled. That only means the guard wasn't doing his job then. Logan found this strange. This hadn't happened in his past life. At that moment, he overheard two other guards talking. They whispered that this knight seemed to be losing his patience with him. Logan noted how sharp his hearing had become, likely a benefit of his enhanced power. The guards commented, no matter who he is, he's still the first master, the coward who ran away after losing to his younger brother. Logan realized that while he'd been training, his reputation had sunk so low that even his own family's knights mocked him. The knight before him added, next time, come back with permission. Logan sighed. This wasn't how he'd planned to redeem his reputation. Reaching under his vest, he ordered the knight, state your name. The knight eyed him suspiciously and responded, Dominion, 
Logan nodded slightly and replied, So, Dominion, you've denied me access to my father based on a law that's outlived its purpose, and you've insulted me with your disrespect. Rick grew tense, calling out to Logan nervously, while the knight wondered if Logan was truly asserting his authority. Logan then said his name aloud and, with a glint of irritation, threw his glove in Dominion's face, declaring, For that unfair insult, I'm challenging you to a duel. The surrounding guards were stunned. Logan smirked. Why so silent, Dominion? Are you scared? His servant, Rick, glanced around anxiously, while Logan taunted, Afraid of the so-called coward? I guess your best years are behind you. Angered, Dominion removed the glove from his face, clenched it, and with gritted teeth, accepted the challenge. After that, they moved to the training ground and armed themselves with wooden swords. What if the young master fights the knight? One of the guards asked. His comrade answered with a smile. He'd lose, no question about it. I saw how his younger brother defeated him once. They say he hid for three months after that to avoid the embarrassment. How long do you think this coward will last? The guard replied. I bet 50 gold he won't last 10 minutes. I'll bet on five, his comrade laughed. Meanwhile, the young master overheard every word. He thought, does no one believe in my victory? Dominion then commented, you look relaxed. Let's see if he can keep that calm. The young master, barely containing his rage, gritted his teeth. Logan, noticing this, smirked, thinking, he dares to agree to fight me, but then says nasty things behind my back. His servant watched nervously, holding his breath. The young master actually went through with this duel. He thought a nervous smile crossing his face. The maid beside him gasped. Rick, are you breathing? She asked, noticing his anxious demeanor. The duel participants approached each other, and the referee announced, the official duel between Logan Mackline and Sir Dominion will now begin. For safety, we'll use wooden swords. Glancing at the young master and noticing his determined nod, the referee hesitated wondering if he should proceed. The young master is stubborn, he thought, but they've been given wooden weapons, so it should be safe, right? Still, he silently hoped Dominion would go easy on him. The referee then signaled the start of the fight, and the duelist stepped back, preparing to attack. Dominion took a stable stance, his body enveloped in an aura. One guard exclaimed, Is he using force? His comrade smirked. Against a normal person? Is he really going all out? Rick, biting his nails, whispered, isn't that cheating? If the young master gets hit, this could end badly. The referee cautioned Dominion, please go easy on him. The young master, observing Dominion's aura, thought this might look intimidating, but he's clumsy with force due to his lack of control. He taunted his opponent, you seem tense. Did something upset you? Dominion gritted his teeth, his mind flashing back to his frustrations. He thinks he can talk down to me? I've spent years rising through the ranks, but now, at 40, I'm the weakest in the order, just waiting for retirement. And now this kid, in rage, he charged. Rick, panicking, clutched a nearby knight. Stop him. The young master will be killed. But the judge merely replied. He agreed to the duel. There's nothing we can do. Dominion leapt, determined to finish this fight. But Logan, calm and collected, waited for the right moment then sidestepped Dominion's strike and countered with a precise, powerful technique. From the outside, it looked like a light touch, but Dominion's face twisted in pain, and his wooden sword fell as he sank to his knees. The young master, now enveloped in a calm aura, looked down at him and said, You call yourself a knight, but is this really your best? The spectators were shocked by the unexpected outcome. The knights and servants murmured in disbelief. Did you see that? He even used force. Logan turned to the judge. I'd like to give Dominion a second chance, he said. Dominion, still dazed, was barely able to react. As the judge approached him, he asked, Are you all right? Dominion didn't respond, staring at his trembling hand. How did this happen? Am I really weaker than this kid? Enraged, he activated his force again, yelling, This can't be happening. The young master observed his opponent's desperation and thought, he's pushing himself too hard. Dominion swung his sword, but Logan countered with a swift blow, causing blood to drip from Dominion's nose as he lost his balance and fell. Disgusted, Logan muttered, 
I gave him a second chance, but now it's time for him to accept defeat. Dominion, humiliated, admitted defeat. But before he could finish, Logan slapped him across the face, knocking him down again. His thoughts hardened. I've shown enough mercy to this vassal who dared to defy his lord. Logan then began to beat Dominion as he ride in pain, begging him to stop. Horrified, Rick bit his fingers and whispered, This is so cruel. Someone stop him. The surrounding knights were shocked. Is this really the young master? One asked. How has he changed so much in just three months? Not only has he awakened his power, but he's transformed his entire sword technique, as if he's been training for decades. At last, Logan stopped and lowered his hands. The judge declared, Logan Mackline is the victor. Later, he met with his father, who remarked, impressive. It seems you've awakened. What happened during training? Logan hesitated. Was he watching? He wondered. I let go of my self-interest and resolved to move beyond the past. At some point, I felt power filling me. It was incredible. In my past life, this was exactly how I felt. Only after letting go of revenge did I gain strength. His father nodded. I see you've changed. But the first thing you did with your newfound power was attack the knight. He gave his son a disapproving look. Logan, however, replied confidently. He deserved it. I heard the whole story from the guards. His father sighed. Did you really need to go so far? Yes, Logan answered firmly. He tried to deceive his lord's son, undermining discipline in our household. Hierarchy holds our structure together. If it weakens, everything will fall apart. After ten years as a mercenary, I know that order among armed men is vital. His father nodded slowly. Dominion did make a grave error, but try to show some restraint in the future. Logan, surprised at the ease of his father's forgiveness, raised an eyebrow. Patrick noticed and asked, Were you expecting punishment? Logan quickly waved his hands. No, not at all. Patrick added, While I don't entirely agree with your approach, avoid acting without my permission next time. Remember, you still haven't officially earned your rank. Logan replied, recalling that his father had mentioned there was something else he should know. His fiancée, Rena, would be visiting soon. Upon hearing this news, the protagonist was very surprised, his jaw trembling with anticipation. He was delighted and thought with a smile that his milk cow would finally arrive. Soon after, a carriage arrived at their estate, and a young woman stepped out. The guards announced, Lady Rena Wolves has arrived, and she entered the estate, drawing admiring glances from the servants and knights. One knight even remarked, the young gentleman is very lucky. Stopping at the stairs, she greeted Lord Macline, saying that they had not seen each other for a long time. A smile lit up her face as she asked if he was well. The Baron laughed, commenting that she had become a true lady. Rick, observing nearby, looked at her with admiration, recalling how he had seen her as a child. She had grown up to be a real beauty. He glanced at the young gentleman and, seeing his gloomy face, thought, what's wrong with him? He should be the happiest of us all. Lady Rena then took a scroll from a servant and announced that she would read a letter entrusted to her by the Count. At the beginning of the letter, the Count addressed Lord Patrick Macline as a dear friend, and then a long series of pleasantries followed. Half an hour later, the knights were already tired of listening when she finally moved on to the end, revealing that, due to unavoidable circumstances, Count Wolves was asking to dissolve the engagement. Lady Rena handed the letter back to the servant and said, That is all. Silence filled the hall for a few moments. Logan thought that the Count was beating around the bush, but actually meant that he expected Patrick Macline to become an Aura user. Yet, after 20 years, Patrick was still a high-ranking knight, and his son was even less accomplished. Why would they lower their standards to ally with House Macline? This was the real reason for breaking off the engagement. Finally, Patrick spoke up in rage, asking if House Wolves was trying to insult them by breaking off the engagement without a valid reason. The knights exchanged nervous glances, sensing their lord's anger. Rena, with an innocent look, replied that this was not the intention. She had anticipated he might react this way, so she had come personally to avoid any misunderstandings. With tears welling up in her eyes, 
She explained that her memories of spending a year with them as a child were dear to her. The moments she shared in their serene home were treasures that her young heart still cherished. She had no desire to forget them, but bound to her family's wishes, she was obliged to follow her father's instructions. Some maids were moved by her words, shedding tears themselves and remarking that her heart was as beautiful as her appearance. Marin Kiro, the baron's wife, then spoke with displeasure. So, what is the reason? I would like to hear about these inevitable circumstances. Rena looked up at her with tear-streaked cheeks, but remained silent. Logan thought to himself that Marin, who was Ronan's biological mother, had long considered him an enemy due to issues of succession. However, since this concerned the honor of the family, she would not interfere here. Rena lowered her gaze and apologized, saying that she could not reveal any details because she herself did not know the reason. Marin asked if she was really unaware of the details of her own marriage arrangements. Rena replied sadly that, as was often the case, her father made such important decisions without consulting her. Marin pressed her, saying that they were just supposed to accept the news of the engagement's end without any explanation. Rena grew more nervous and explained that, in exchange, her family was offering three million gold as compensation. Dwayne Filner, the Macline Estates financial manager, lit up with anticipation, and Logan smirked, thinking things were going well if they could get this money. Then suddenly his father shouted, How dare they? His voice made the estate shake, alarming everyone present. Rena became frightened, and her knight, Rocker, stepped forward, asking Patrick to calm down and continue the conversation. Patrick eyed him and commented that he was a high-ranking knight like himself, impressive for his age, and suggested that wounding him would be a fair trade for House Wolves' insult. Rocker, visibly nervous, gathered his courage and responded that his master was a man of honor and had no intention of trying to buy it. Rena added that her family did not seek to purchase House Macline's honor with money. Rather, they offered the sum as a sincere gesture to maintain friendship despite the inevitable circumstances. Patrick gritted his teeth, struggling to contain his anger, but he realized that pushing further would make him seem unreasonable. Taking a deep breath, he declared, A guest is a guest, even if they bring bad news. House Macline will not oppress them. Rena breathed a sigh of relief, and Patrick continued, saying they would not accept Wolves' offer, but would instead request one thing, a formal apology from Wolves to his son. The knights murmured approval, admiring Patrick's stance. However, Logan disagreed, raising his hand and addressing his father. Smiling nervously, he expressed that as the one affected by the broken engagement, he had a request. Internally, he thought they needed the three million gold, which was as much as their annual budget. Half of their funds already came from his stepmother's family, and without it, they would go bankrupt. How could his father dismiss this so easily? He asked to accept the offer. His father's face darkened as he demanded if Logan was trying to make him go back on his word. Logan felt the weight of his father's disapproval, yet he straightened up, acknowledging that while House Macline was honorable, they were indeed poor. They owed three million to the bank, with annual interest of 150000 Without current support, they would soon go bankrupt. His father and stepmother were shocked by his words. Logan added that if they didn't accept the compensation, they'd be known as a great house of the poor. Although he wanted to speak more bluntly, he held back, recognizing the formality of the setting. Instead, he told his father that they should accept the three million precisely out of honor. Patrick, taken aback, asked if this was why his son wanted him to go back on his word. Logan apologized, explaining that House Wolves was superior to them, with the Earl ruling the East. Though his forces were stationed there, they were not directly serving him. Logan feared that simply accepting an apology would create rumors that they were pandering to wolves. The servants began to whisper among themselves, and Rena intervened, assuring that her family respected House Macline's honor. Logan looked at her and remarked that while she came to break off the engagement, she still talked of reasonableness and should not deceive herself. This put Rena in her place, and she fell silent. In his past life, Logan believed she was sincerely saddened by the engagement's end, but before it happened, she had called him for one last private moment together. She thanked him for coming and, with a smile, 
expressed that though they were parting, she wanted to create one last memory. He had been too enchanted by her then. His life as a young master had fallen apart, and he was tempted to run away with her. But suddenly, she took out a knife, lifted her dress hem, and as he called out to her in concern, she cut the fabric. Confused but quickly gathering himself, he threw her knife away. Holding her torn dress to her chest, she sneered, mocking him, saying, Could someone like you ever own me? Understand your place and get out. He had been utterly betrayed, feeling she had deceived him. Now, he believed her true intention was to profit from their family before leaving. This time, though, he would ensure she did not succeed. 